Hello and welcome to my channel. Today on Dahlia Speaks, I'll be talking about defying writer stereotypes. A big thank you to Eileen Nesman for creating this tag and tagging me in it. The first question is to talk about three to five writer stereotypes that don't apply to me. Number one, working in coffee shops. I don't get that. Coffee shops are noisy. There are a lot of distractions, a lot of people walking around. I just don't get the sitting there like a struggling writer with your coffee growing cold next to your elbow as you try to type out your great American novel amidst people calling for frappuccinos and other type coffees, I guess, that they call out in the coffee shop. Um, it's just not my type of place. It's loud, distracting, and personally, if I'm in a coffee shop, I'd rather be drinking coffee, eating, and people watching. A lot of writers say they write in their pajamas. Well, I don't. As a stay-at-home mom, even though I don't go to work outside the house, I still have to drop my little ones off at the bus stop at the unearthly hour of 7 a.m. Even still, I get up, put on presentable clothes, outside clothes, I like to call them, and make sure that I'm at least halfway pulled together before I get into that little minivan and tootle to the bus stop. I always think, like, what if I'm in an accident? I don't want to get out of the car if I've got on slippers and pajamas in sub-zero weather. Am I right? Number three stereotype that I don't fit is the thing where, what does that mean? I'm, I'll put it up on the screen. If you annoy a writer, or do not annoy a writer, because they will write you into their next book and then kill you. Kill you. Really? If someone annoys me, they're going to be so far down on my radar that I can't even be bothered with them, much less develop them into a character, put them into a book, and then kill them off. And of course, every time you edit the book, or every time you read or see the book, you'll be reminded of that person. Why do that to yourself with negative people? Sage them away. Sage them away, blow them out of your life. Don't even bother dealing with them any more than you have to. So no, I won't be writing any people who annoy me into my next book just to murder them. Nope. Cats, 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 cats. You cannot open Facebook or Instagram and not see an author with their cat lying on the shelf, with their cat lying on their computer, with the cat lying in their lap, with the cat lying on their manuscript pretending to edit it. I don't have a cat. I have an 85 pound rescue pit bull. The only thing she does to participate in my writing is to lie directly behind my chair while I'm working. So as soon as I try to get up, push the chair backwards to go anywhere, she's right there, right in the mix. And then she makes me feel guilty for waking her up. So no cats for this writer. What part of the writing process is hardest for you? I'd have to say, even though it's not a required part of the process, I keep trying to do it. I keep hoping that it's going to work out for me. I don't think it's ever going to work out for me in this lifetime. And that is outlining. I've tried beat sheets. I've bought every Save the Cat book there is. I have Romancing the Beat, Beat This, Beat That, Looking Online, Reading Beat Sheets. I can't do it. I cannot map out a story using a beat sheet. Now, what I do accomplish is that I write whatever comes to mind starting out my story and then when I'm done for the day I write out a few sentences to let me know what I want to come next. Usually I know what happens at the beginning of the story and usually I know what happens at the end and the rest of the time I just muddle through because outlining and beating out a plot and plotting it just doesn't work for me long term. Number three Number three question, do you ever feel imposter syndrome as a writer? I have to honestly say no. I write to please myself. I try not to pay attention to what everyone else is doing because that's a sure way to knock yourself down the hole and 
get yourself depressed. I like to focus on my writing, what I write, why I like to write, and I move on from that. Question four, do you receive a lot of support or skepticism about your writing? Well, this harkens back to the stereotype of putting negative people in your novel and then killing them off. I do my best to keep negative people out of my life. If I feel that they are skeptici, skepticism, skeptics, um, I don't really need to let them know everything that's going on to my, in my life. If I let them know that I'm a writer and they make a, oh, you still writing those books? And I say yes and I move on politely. Luckily, there's a great writer support network online where you can go find the support that you need basically 24 hours a day when you need it. So I'd have to say I receive a lot of support for my writing rather than skepticism. What is one piece of advice I want to give to new writers? Always work on your craft. Whether you're taking classes, reading books, finding new ways to do old things, keep studying, keep up with what's going on in the industry, and keep polishing your writing. That is the best way that you'll keep interested in what you're doing and that you'll improve with time. And that's the end of that chapter. Thank you for watching. Can't get enough of me? Well, my social media links are down below. Until next time, I wish you peace, I wish you love, and I wish you productive writing sessions. Bye-bye.